A differential amplifier with variable gain is shown here. We have V in 1, we have V in 2 as input voltages, and then we have the V out. We want to find the voltage gain, differential voltage gain for this uh, system in the form of V out over V in minus V, V in 1. And I'm going to show you that this uh, V out over delta V in is going to be equal to R F R four over R three times uh, R G over R F in a simplified scheme when in some conditions are satisfied. So as simple as this. That's my goal to show how we can get to this outcome. Now, with that in mind, let me show you the process. So uh, it's as simple as this. You have op amp number one, op amp number two. We are assuming that these are properly biased, so the supply voltages, positive, negative, are applied. Uh, and then the op amps are operating a linear region, so virtual short valid for both of them, meaning that V plus or the voltage at positive input terminal of op amp here, for example, is equal to the voltage of the negative input terminal of op amp. So V positive and V negative are equal. Uh, this is equation number, let's say, 1. Equation number 2 is we look at this V in 1 and ground. So the voltage that appears at the negative input terminal of op amp 1 is just the voltage division between given resistors R1 and R2. So what I can say is I can say V at negative input terminal of op amp 1 is equal to just simply R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in 1. That's uh, equation number two. Let's keep that. Okay, the other interesting thing is if you take a look at uh, V out here, and then you can see that from V out, we are going through RG and then through RF, and this op amp number two as a, f uh, as a formation of an uh, inverting amplifier. And the gain of this system is uh, clearly well known. So this system that I'm just highlighting for you result in a voltage at this node to show up and become negative RF over RG times V out. Uh, simply the feedback resistor divided by RG in a negative out, uh, gain formation. And that's exactly why we are connected to the positive input terminal of the other op amp, because via this negative gain, effectively, we end up with a negative feedback in this scenario, which is the target. So we uh, have this in mind for the voltage here. Now, the nice thing is for the positive input terminal of this op amp, I can just uh, write a KCL here, very nice, in the sense that the current that goes in should be equal to the current that goes out because op amp is in not saturated an ideal op amp so no current can flow through the input terminal because input impedance of this op amp is infinite so all i'm trying to say is this is scheme that uh, v into goes through uh, applies uh, so a current out of v into goes through r3 this current gets to positive input terminal of op amp that current has to go through R4, all of it. There is no other escape for it. So when it goes through R4, it hits the red node. And that red node, as we just found, uh, is equal to the voltage that is minus RF over RG times V out. So we can write a KCL here. Uh, and that KCL is basically saying this current should be equal to that current. So Effectively, the KCL is saying V in 2 minus V plus divided by R3, which is incoming current, got the current going through R3, is equal to V plus minus this voltage. So minus minus RF over RG times V out and then divide by the R4. Okay. What I'm going to do is just uh, clean up a little bit and then let's name this as equation number three. So I'm going to use combination of equation one, two, and three. That's what I'm using now. And uh, the interesting thing is 
if I use this combination, I am effectively going to uh, just do the algebraic work here and also substitute V plus with V minus that has this value. So that's what I mean by combination of these three equations. If you do so, you will end up with this interesting outcome that will state that uh, V out is equal to V in is equal to uh, this whole thing. So you will have RG over RF multiplying V, uh, then R4 over R3 times V into minus R minus R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times R3 plus R4 divided by R3 V in 1. So that's the interesting uh, linear combination or relationship that you will see. Let me just use different colors so that is obvious. I am talking about uh, V in 2 and also V in 1 in this equation and then V out on the other side of the equation. Now, while we found what we wanted in terms of relating output in uh, voltage as a function of the two input voltages, the in the special case or scenario that I can make the extra assumption that R1 R1 is equal to R3, so let's make the assumption that R1 is set to be equal to R3. And also make the assumption that it should be, it's a design choice, basically. Make the assumption that R2 is set to be equal to R4. If you can make this happen, then this thing we found here can be further simplified now that R2 and R4 they are equal, R1 and R2 and R are equal, and R2 and R4 equal, you will end up with this thing cancel out this portion, and therefore, uh, and R2 of course is equal to R4, and then you end up with this simplified situation that V out is equal to, let me use a different color so that there is no confusion, so you will end up with V out is equal to RG over RF times R. 4 over R3 times V into minus V in 1. So basically it's purely differential amplifier with that with this assumption you end up with designing a purely differential amplifier that uh, the delta of the two input voltages will be scaled up or amplified by the voltage gain which is the combination of these guys um, and then one of these resistors can be selected as a potential meter so that it gives you the variable gain you wanted. Okay, I hope that uh, this example is helpful uh, in terms of uh, showing you how you can find the uh, voltage gain of, let's say, a scenario like this, uh, So uh, and by the proper setting of the resistors uh, for a differential amplifier with variable gain.